Well, hello. So today we're going to talk about anti-Semitism. What is anti-Semitism? Anti-Semitism is the hatred or strong dislike of someone within the Jewish or Israeli or Israelite community. Very, three, these are three various different communities. They combine together, but they're three various different communities. I will explain them to you. Uh, Jewish, Israelite, and Israeli. So you've got those particular elements. Then you've got uh, the Smurfs. We want to talk about the Smurfs and its anti-Semitic elements. What? Yeah. So let's address these issues. First and foremost, let's start off with the Smurfs. So the Smurfs, Papa Smurf, happens to have a red cap. The other Smurfs happen to have white caps. They're all blue bloods. And the Gargamel, who happens to be the witch of the series and the evil villain, happens to command uh, the Angel of Death which is his cat's name. I'm not going to say it. Uh, I don't say specific names. So, um, yeah, so I'm not going to say it. But that's, so that's, those various, and now most recently, I personally saw a video where there was a Star of David on the a, a video game Smurf's Nightmare. I'm not sure whether this was, I tried to look at the footage of the entire video game and I didn't find it. I found it in one of those top 10, like top 10 myths, you know, and I, and it was a, I lost track of where the video was, but ultimately I thought it was really interesting that these were, of course, in children's cartoons, oftentimes there's things slipping in and being put in into the context. So, uh, the Smurfs was a beloved franchise for me. I love the Smurfs. And I, it, I loved the Smurfs. I don't really love the Smurfs as much as I used to. But uh, bringing those elements, and just for various different reasons, I had a teacher in junior high school who would bully me, and she would call me Gargamel. <laughs> uh, and because my nose. Yeah, she would call me Gargamel because of my nose. So I thought it was really interesting. I think she she definitely might have had issues with uh, anti-Semitism and or homophobia. <laughs> well, I know she had issues with homophobia because she pulled me out of class in order to ask a girl out while I was questioning my sexuality. But that's a whole different issue. <laughs> I think I've talked about that. Uh, so let's get back on track. Anti-Semitism. So it happens. It happens in subliminal ways, uh, as I believe perhaps this teacher might have been anti-Semitic. It happens. Uh, it's there. It's there. It's an issue that we need to resolve, and that we can resolve, and that we will resolve, and that hopefully by the time the future generations that are watching this video, this will this video will they're like anti-Semitism. What's that? It's like well, back in the day. <laughs> um. But where does it come from? Where does it, why do people feel that they need to be anti-Semitic? Well, for the longest time, there have been pockets of the Jewish community that have kept to themselves. And even within Hollywood, a lot of people argue that uh, there's a form of uh, religious nepotism. You know, religious nepotism in the sense of like, oh, you're Jewish? Okay, come on board. And, you know, because you're clean, because you are not a Gentile. And Jewish people are, there's a sentiment out there within some people that Jewish people are just better than the chosen ones. Uh, now, there's three various different elements. There are Israelites, Israelis, and the Jewish community. People who are Jewish follow the Jewish faith. The Jewish faith is not entirely encompassing of just all Hebrew words and all spirituality. Uh, it just happens to encompass the Jewish faith. And it's all encompassing elements within the Jewish faith. Now, Israel, Israelis are people that are born in Israel. These are, could be called people that are not Jewish and are not Israelites, but just happen to be born in Israel. Therefore, Israelis. And then we've got Israelites. Now, Israelites are individuals that believe in the light that has resounded from Israel, from the temple. The 72 names of God. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be a Kabbalist student, but just someone who has that fervor, that passion for that spiritual energy that is emanating and flourishing out of a specific 
place, which happens to be Israel. Uh, do you have to be religious? Are you judgmental? No, because it's all about sharing. It's all about sharing and giving. There are no, uh, like, oh, you're Jewish, you're not Jewish, you're this, you're this, you're not. There's no speculative, there's unconditional love, and there's no speculation as to what and who and when and why. It's just sharing. It's just constant sharing. That is a dichotomy to some people within the Jewish faith who feel that it's not about sharing. It's about containing and sharing only within your own community. There's a Noah consciousness, a Moses consciousness, and a Jesus consciousness. The Moses consciousness, the Noah consciousness is my ark, my people, that's it. The Moses consciousness, to my personal understanding, was Moses fought for. A specific group of people. Some of them happen to be Gentiles and a specific group of people. The Jesus mentality was fought for everyone, like everyone in the world. That is, and Jesus was the biggest example of an Israelite um, to me. Moses, uh, because Jesus embodied, was, a, was able to take those elements and put them into uh, parables and able to take the wisdom and put them into parables so that that way people can dive deeper into the secrets and find out what's going on. Uh, so that, those are the elements. So, and who killed Jesus? Well, we're going to get controversial. It was a community between, uh, you know, a Gentiles and Jews. Yeah. It was Jewish people and Gentiles who murdered Jesus. And it was that, it was, there is alternate realities that exist. If people had opened up and said, you know, and within groups, there's dark people. We're just going to go ahead and say it. Within group, there's dark people. And sometimes the actions of these individuals will resonate for the entire history for a specific time until we're able to go back and say, you know what? That, that's, that's just those people, those individual people. That's not the entire Jewish community that murdered Jesus. You know, <laughs> I think that some people love to go after that with like, well, didn't you guys kill Jesus? <laughs> don't you not believe? And then you don't believe in Jesus? <laughs> I think people love to harp on that one. But ultimately, it's about coming together. And it's about, uh, you know, just coming together and letting go of all our stipulations and all our prejudices and and just sharing the wisdom, whatever, what, what do you, I have, what do you have, you know, putting all our cards out on the table and saying, you know, this is who I am, this is what I have, and then that's how we come to the answers, because I, I found a really interesting, um, poison and things that kill you in the natural world, they're kind of like in Batman 1, in Batman 1, there's a really powerful secret where, um, the things that, um, you know, it wasn't, it was the deodorant with the lipstick with the hairspray. It wasn't just one thing. And that's kind of how it is. In, and I mean, that's really how it is in humanity is that it isn't one thing that kills you, but it's a combination of chemicals that kill you as is a combination of spiritual elements that help us elevate towards. Uh, so it isn't just one individual story that is going to move us forward, but it's all stories that are going to move us forward. Thank you for listening, and I wish you a wonderful year.